When you're in blessing, God gives you things. But in the day of trouble, He establishes things in you. And most of the things that you get in the Spirit, you will receive in times of confrontation and difficulty. How y'all doing? <clears throat> Spot on. <laughs> Look, I'm just going to go ahead and pray my favorite prayer at the moment. Can't seem to get it out of my spirit, off my lips. So you just have to put up with me for a couple of minutes. Father. Oh, God. Father, we're so proud of you. All that you are, all that you're doing. Seems like, Lord, we're just really getting to see you properly. For the first time, you're breaking through the clouds, through the fog, and you're showing us who you are and touching our spirits in a fresh way and teaching us how to live from that secret place of your presence. So many wonderful things about you, Lord. It's hard to praise you sometimes because words lose their sense and their meaning and their value and we look at you. Sometimes tongues doesn't do justice to you. Lord, you have this way of just reducing us to silence and awe because your majesty comes. We want you to know, Lord, that we're ready for what you want to do. We're hungry. Thank you for making us desperate, because we're desperate. We are so desperate. Thank you for bringing us to frustration. We bless you for that, because we are frustrated. Because we are seeing something that we're not yet in. But our hearts aspire, and it's you. You're the one that's given us the aspiration. You're the one that's planted a dream in our heart. You're the one that's tugging us, pulling us on, out from where we are. We don't know where we're going, and you won't tell us. Because huh. you're teaching us to walk by faith. So we feel like we're surrounded by a cloud of ignorance, but Lord, in all of that, we're learning how to walk with you. And we just ask you to keep prodding us, keep pushing us, keep pulling us, keep tugging us out beyond any place we've ever been. And I pray this time together will be prophetic. It will move us forward into realms we've never seen, never experienced. Lord, touch us. Let us see into the realm of the spirit and the supernatural. Let us have that sense of being shut in with you at this time. And Lord, tonight, give us ears to hear what you want to say. In Jesus' name. Very privileged um, to have a number of intercessors around my life. People who pray for me night and day. They, uh, when I'm away from home, they're praying constantly. And since they've been with me the last few years, I've really been privilege to have a number of uh, angelic visitations over my life. Do I need to go up higher? Put it here. Put it there. Right in the middle. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I've been privileged to have a number of angelic visitations around my life and didn't ask for it, wasn't thinking about it. But you know, it's just the way of God, isn't it? Sometimes, you know, the best things that happen to us 
We'd like to say that we planned it, we desired it, we went for it, we heard it, we believe God for it, but most of the time we'd trip up over our bootlaces and we'd stumble into something wonderful. And that's the way it is. And I remember a few years ago out in the Philippines, my, we had an awful conference. It was going really badly. It was, um, it was dead. You know, it was like you wanted to kill this thing and head for the bar or something. I remember standing there on the third day saying, Dear God, unless you do something, you know, we're not going to get the breakthrough we've been hanging out in the Holy Ghost for. And uh, all the team was sick and just a matter of standing up and whoever was alive at that moment preaching. <laughs> and uh, so we just determined to go for it. And I think I've been like preaching for I don't know how long. And uh, my secretary sent me a fax, just said, you know, we've all been really in warfare the last few days. And this is what we feel God gave us. We broke through like for 25 minutes. God gave us permission to pray one thing. And we prayed it until he told us to stop. And we had 25 minutes. But all we could do was pray this thing. And God said, every time you say Graham's name, I'll send an angel to where he is. So for 25 minutes, that's all they did. They just spoke my name. And I don't know how many angels turned up. But I do know, I, I, on that evening, I read the facts out to the people and I stood there grinning like an idiot for four hours and did absolutely nothing while all heaven broke loose. And spontaneous deliverance and healings and people he, receiving prophecy by the audible voice of God. And there were hundreds of Muslims came outside the conference center, but there were angels in all the buildings and the angels were acting as bouncers on the doors and wouldn't let them in. And it was just pretty wild and the reason I'm saying that is because I had another fax today and uh, this is my secretary Carol kind of British understatement she just said it's been a bit of a battle praying for you in the conference the last couple of days but we know that warfare with angels are being dispatched as many angels as I see being dispatched with jugs of oil, there are the same number with swords accompanying them. Hope you're doing okay. If they turn up, we'll be doing okay. So Father, we, Lord, just, maybe so. Maybe so, Father. We want, Lord, this conference to be, Lord, a visitation from heaven. Maybe so. By your spirit, Father, we trust you. We trust you. And we pray that you will trust us with the fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. Trust us, Lord, with the presence of your angels. Trust us, Lord, with heaven breaking in to what we're doing. In Jesus' name. This is my kind of weird anointing for PA. It doesn't matter where I go in the world. Every other speaker can get on perfectly. And as soon as it kind of gets anywhere around me, it goes really strange. I think it's an English thing. <laughs> that was an American thing. <laughs> Bless him, Lord. But not today. <laughs> okay. You got your Bible, I want you to turn to Isaiah 55. I, I want to try and talk about understanding God's ways. I, I really feel that if you really aspire to being prophetic, you need to understand process. You need to understand how God thinks and how God moves. You need to understand God's ways. Because very often we're... We, resort, we have to resort to moving in the prophetic simply because we don't understand what God is doing. And there are some times when you don't need a prophecy, you need a word of wisdom. And wisdom knows what God is doing. And sometimes you need to say to people, well, actually, people say to you, is there a word from God? And you say, well, no, there isn't a word from God for you about this, but this is what God is doing and why he's doing it. There is no prophecy, but there is wisdom. 
And Isaiah 55 says, in verse 8, it says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Then turning over into Isaiah 43, first four verses says this, But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Saba for your, in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. It's really important that we learn to see into the realm of the Spirit. And there is an anointing. If you stand still, you have to learn. If you're prophetic, you have to learn to look beyond what is natural into the supernatural. Many of us only look at the first thing that's in front of us. It's not enough. You have to look beyond it. You have to look behind it to see what God is doing. And that's where the clearest prophetic words come from. It is in that place behind the natural, in the supernatural realm, that releases the now word of God to say, this is what God is doing. This is why he's doing it. This is what you need to do. And this is what will happen. There's an anointing to detect the fine hand of God at work in situations. But understand that God works and he thinks completely differently from us. And if you have no revelatory rationale for what is happening, we will always interpret things in the realm of the soul. That is by how we think or by how things affect us and how they make us feel. And that soulish approach, it means that we get hung up on our emotions. We get hung up on negative thought patterns. And that produces in us a reaction rather than a response. See, if you see in the spirit, it will provoke you into a spiritual response before God. And not a soulish reaction. And that spiritual response will bring peace. It'll bring rest, it'll bring faith, it'll release trust, it'll give empowerment and release to you in the circumstances that you're in. So you have two ways. You can, in situations, you can have a soulish reaction or a spiritual response. That soulish reaction is, first thing you do is panic. Or you become anxious. And you can't trust God and be anxious at the same time because they're incompatible. They can't exist in the same space at the same time. One of them has to go and you get to choose. Soulish reaction is full of panic, anxiety, leads you into unbelief and worry, fear, sometimes anger at the circumstances. You feel helpless. You... Take a step lower down into self-pity. Maybe you blame other people or you become fatalistic. Oh, well, you can't change things. That's the way it is. Back home, we call it the Doris Day syndrome. Que sera, sera. Oh, well, can't change it, so that's that. But often, too, a soulish reaction produces an intense desire for deliverance and not for spiritual growth. How many of us really understand that Jesus is Lord? That he really does know what he's doing? And that sometimes he allows in his wisdom what he could easily prevent by his power. But when things happen to us, the only thing we're thinking of is I've got to get out of this situation as quickly as I can. Understand that when you're in blessing, God gives you things. But in the day of trouble, he establishes things in you. And most of the things that you get in the spirit, you will receive in times of confrontation and difficulty. Because in the day of trouble, God is always working. That's when he's establishing, he's ordering, he's presenting, he's putting something on the inside of you. You have to stand still long enough, though, to let God do what it is he wants to do. 
And it's in the day of trouble that God will establish you in something in the Spirit. If you continue, though, to have a soulish reaction, the only thing that will be established is your own immaturity. Every time God shows you something, every time God releases something, every time God gives you something, there's always a test on whatever He's doing. God speaks to you, He'll test you on it. It's like being at school, isn't it? Everything God gives you will come to you through testing. The good news is you can't possibly fail any of the tests. You just get to take it again. And again. And again. And again 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 until you pass. Some of us have been facing the same issue, the same situation for a number of years now. Well, I have news for you. You're going to keep facing it until you pass it. God will wait 20 years for you to pass something. He waited 20 years for you to have a spiritual response in that area that's always dogged you. He waited 20 years for you, more, for you to come to that place, bending the knee in that area and saying, Father, just have your way.